There are a lot of gold stories out there and there's a lot of gold explorer stories out there. How are you gonna stand out? What do you know about what you've got? That's the bit which was enough to turn the switch for Eric Sprott. We know where you are today, but how are you gonna move this thing forward? Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. We spoke earlier today to Jim Grieg. He's the CEO of Benchmark Metals. They're another BC gold story. We talked through their recent fundraise and the involvement of Eric Sprott and their development plans for the next 12 months. They're fully funded through the end of next year. If you want to look at any of the topics we discussed, look in the description below, click on the timestamp, that'll take you to that part of the video. And if I could ask that you click the button in the corner of the screen and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, click the notification bell. Let's hear what Jim had to say. Hi, Jim, how are you? Very good, thanks for having me. No, pleasure, pleasure. I'm sorry I missed you in London. Why don't we kick off with a one minute summary for people new to the story and we'll take it from there. Okay, Benchmark Metals is a gold and silver explorer located in Northern British Columbia, Canada. We've just completed two large drill programs and now we're fully funded into 2020 and gearing towards plans of up to 50,000 meters of drilling. This will be followed by a large gold and silver mineral resource estimate. Right, okay, thanks for that. Um, so, so Jim, there's, as you mentioned, you know, gold, gold is on, on the up at the moment, um, gold prices up, but there are a lot of gold stories out there and there's a lot of gold explorer stories out there. How are you going to stand out? So that the main difference between Benchmark and other explorers, not only in our region, but across the world is we're a former producer from 30 years ago. We're simply taking um, data that existed from the past with some infrastructure at site and um, building out, extending new zones and defining zones towards a mineral resource estimate. But perhaps the key here is that uh, we can drive right to site. There's no helicopter support required. We already have existing metallurgy from the past. Uh, as I said, infrastructure, there's five levels of underground development. There's a small tailings facility. And the fact that we can pull our trucks right up to the drill rig uh, drastically reduces costs, no, not only for exploration, but uh, to fast track this project into production. But there's got to be more to it than that, because you know we we hear that story a lot. You know, infrastructure's there. You've yeah. you've got some tailings. You've got historic infrastructure in place. Um, there's got to be more to it than that. What, what what's the thing that's resonating in the market when you're telling this story? The, the bigger piece of the puzzle here is in the past, um, the Cheney Gold Mine. It was called. They were mining uh, high grade gold and silver veins. Um, so they ranged anywhere from one to about seven meter veins, mm -hmm. but they completely ignored these halos surrounding the veins that carry very good moderate grade gold and silver. So now we're seeing bulk tonnage type numbers. Um, these include anything that uh, runs from 25 meters to well over 100 meters, and they can carry anything from two to five grams gold at surface. So the different story here is that um, we believe this project and what what will be a mine at some point will will not be narrow main vein mining. It will be a bulk tonnage deposit. Right. Okay. Starting from surface. Okay. So you, so that's a it's, a it's a bulk play with high grade upside to it. Exactly. Right. And Precisely. and what do you know today? What do you, what do you know about what you've got? So from. Uh, Results and data that we have shows that uh, gold is 93% recovery. Silver is at 77%. We will embark on some new metallurgy over the coming year, but this is just based on production from the past. Uh, we have six zones within the heart of the property. We're extending all six of those zones, not only on strike, but on depth. They still remain open. Um, recently, this year, we put out numbers such as uh, near 33 meters of 5.7 grams gold and over 100 grams silver. Uh, that particular intersect started from surface straight down. Um, but within those broader intersections, we see things like uh, close to one meter of well over 100 grams gold and into the thousands of silver. So uh, there's high grade, 
uh, within uh, narrower slivers, which is bound by these large intercepts of moderate gray gold. Right. Okay. So, and you've recently got some money into the company from Sprott, Eric Sprott himself and, and the Sprott Group. Um, what have they bought into? Is this just option money for them? Uh, you know, because they've spread their money far, far and wide in the past few months. You know, from what you've just told me, was that enough to get them excited or did you know someone? No, I think the excitement there with having um, Sprott, Sprott Capital and Eric Sprott involved is that this, uh, there's a lot of silver in this project. So it's not only gold, but it brings some exceptional silver values. Uh, by value, this is likely to be um, a gold deposit into the future, but by quantity, it is no doubt a silver deposit. Yeah. Okay. That, okay, interesting. And that, that's the bit which was enough to turn the switch for Eric Sprott. Yeah, I believe, you know, that he, uh, singularly on its own, this project could be potentially a gold mine. And if there were no gold, then alternatively, it certainly could be a silver mine. And that lends itself to providing some very good margins once you begin production. Right. Okay. So you've got about five, six million bucks in the treasury at the moment. That's easy through to the end of next year. What are you going to be doing in the next 12 months? Correct. We've got um, just over five million in the treasury, but we've just recently announced another financing for over five million. Um, so we, uh, in the coming weeks, we should have well over $10 million in the treasury. And with that, we will build upon a much larger drill program to define and expand existing zones. Uh, we will do some metallurgy work as well. But uh, the big milestone following the next drill program in 2020 is a mineral resource estimate. Right. And, and obviously, in the last couple of years, you know, providing a mineral resource estimate hasn't really done anything in the marketplace for most explorers. Do you think because of timing, it's going to be different for you? I, I think it's mostly based on the quantum and size that we're looking at. Um, so if you can picture um, one of our zones extends for over one kilometer, it pinches and swells across that one kilometer, but it extends for 250 meters depth and approximately a 50 meter width. So if you were due to do the crude calculations just on that, um, you'd be nearing closer to uh, 1 million ounce type potential. Uh, but you've got to keep in mind that there's several other zones that are closely spaced to this um, Cliff Creek zone. And uh, if you were to fast forward several years, I think what you'll see is um, a string of pearls. So three to four open pitable type resources uh, where you would mine in the opening years and then later extend to depth through the narrower high grade veins. So how can you say, why are you talking about a string of pearls? What, again, what comes back to what do you know today versus what you hope? So uh, what we're seeing now is uh, um, there's several structures across this property. And what you see is the structures are cross cut with faults. Hmm. And often the faults uh, look as though they're cutting off um, uh, zones, but uh, we're starting to see that perhaps these zones are just simply offset from the faulting and at one point were connected. And so uh, what you do is you, you, you picture a string of uh, three to four resources that are interconnected uh, in, in some way, uh, but have been uh, disconnected through geology. Right. Okay. And so t 10, 11 million bucks is going to allow you to do a lot more drilling. Yeah. How many meters are you hoping to get through this year? We're planning for up to 50,000 meters, but okay. certainly um, with the with the present treasury, we could drill 35,000 meters. And uh, this is a statistical um, adventure at the moment. So it's it's really a mathematical equation and based on statistics, the more drilling we can do at a tighter space, with more step outs, we can certainly increase the resource. And uh, it's very clear the path from the resource estimate. It's all based on sound geological principles. We see anomalous gold and silver at surface. Uh, the geophysics are outlining structures and uh, large anomalous bodies. 
And on top of that, uh, when you put a drill on top of this altered grounded surface, it is striking uh, large gold and silver intercepts. Right, okay. Well, let's talk about some more numbers now, because you're part of the metals group. They've got three other much, much smaller uh, pro companies, uh, I think, Altiplano, uh, Cortes, and uh, Camino. Um, obviously, you're... you're you're the big boy on the, on the, on the team there. Uh, market cap around 30 million, which is great. Uh, and you, I'm sure you'll tell me you're undervalued at, at, at that price. Um, but how, what's the relationship with those guys, uh, the, the metals group? How, how, what are they doing for their money? So the, the metals group is really, um, it's, it's an operating principle for us to uh, decrease our costs and share people across companies. And so with having a handful of companies allows us to hire very specific and specialized uh, management and technical people. Uh, it helps reduce the cost where you know, several in individuals can work in several companies rather than taking a, a large uh, wage or salary to support them. Um, we can use them as needed and disperse um, all of our costs, administrative and technically, um, throughout several companies. Okay, well, given those other three are, you know, a, a roughly four million bucks each, you're at 30 million bucks, how are you portioning your, the GNA costs from Metals Group into um, your company? Well, the, the most activity is currently now into Benchmark. It's, it's much more advanced than the other companies within the group. Um, so, of course, there, there's a bit of a larger um, rate on expenses and salaries into benchmark. However, it's really the administrative costs that help us because uh, across any junior company, there's, a, I suppose, a, um, a standard cost or a fixed cost it takes to operate. And if we can share um, not only legal types, but accounting and uh, regulatory people across uh, the whole platform, then it provides a large savings. Right, and now with a bit more money in the company, you can pay yourselves properly, can you? Yes, although uh, I, we're operating a bit differently. A, a salary is fantastic and, and it does help. However, um, all of management owns a large piece of this company. And we're all about um, the big equity or ma market cap movement um, to create a win for us. It's all about ownership and writing checks into each of the companies and building wealth um, through growth. Okay, so you're saying the management for benchmarks are not taking a salary? No, we're taking, we're taking salaries, but uh, this is certainly not a lifestyle company. Uh, we do need to take a salary, but um, we're always um, participating in the equity placements where we can. There's, you know, at times we're blocked out because we know a little bit too much, uh, which is fair. Um, but uh, management owns approximately 20% of the company. And um, if you were to include management, Eric's brought, and significant um uh, alliances that we have, we control approximately 50% of the uh, shares outstanding. Okay, well, again, that's that's an interesting point you make. I mean, that says liquidity potentially is part of your problem, doesn't it? Uh, amazingly, we've, we've had quite good uh, trading volumes. Um, even during the past few months where things have slowed, we still trade on average uh, just under 200,000 shares a day. Mm -hmm. um, but if you were to go back several months, um, we were trading near 300,000 shares a day. On a good news event, you could see um, a million shares trade in any single day. Um, so, um, you know, 50% of the story is locked up in uh, management and close, uh, close um, associates. And the rest of the stock is truly retail. Right. And, but you said you're in London, you met some funds, some institutional uh, players. Um, is, that, is that the focus for you now? Is to Because you've got Eric in there now. You know, it's in, that's institutional yeah. or high net worth or whatever way you want to look at it. We're, we're at a point now where um, Benchmark needs to inst insert bigger support for the future. And so we just announced um, uh, a five million dollar raise uh, here in um, early December, 
And that raise will involve uh, some su significant funds and institutions. And uh, that will actually shed some light on us and then provide some uh, real strength in our story. No, absolutely. So I think for you, for the next 12 months, retail's not as important. They're important, but they're not as important to you, it's fair to say. That's, I would say that's fair. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that which leads us nicely on to, you know, what, what's the business model for you going forward? You, we know where you are today, but how are you going to move this thing forward? We, we, we've set a very clear path. Um, the management's experience here is we have put mines into production. And so ultimately, once we get to uh, a large, robust resource estimate, uh, there's generally two paths. Either a larger player or a third party comes on board and takes you over, which would be the, the best reward for shareholders or you work towards putting the project into production. And so clearly um, we have no choice because we, we have what we believe is a very good resource, very good ground with exceptional results. We will endeavor to work this towards production, but along the path as we uh, complete major milestones, our preference would be to have a major takeover of benchmark metals. Okay. So you, you've referenced your team a few times and you've done this before. So who on the team has done what in terms of creating shareholder value? So our, our chairperson um, in the company and, and leader, uh, I, say, I suppose our large spokesperson is John Williamson. And John's a very technically sound um, professional geologist. But to, he was a founder and director at Kamenak Resources. And Kamenak, um, approximately two years ago, was taken over by Gold Corp for over five hundred million dollars. And John's had quite quite a bit of success on um, many different juniors. Uh, I myself, I've been involved in a number of groups that have um, taken um, projects from discovery to uh, uh, to production in West Africa. I uh, was involved with um, uh, quite a successful group, namely Keegan Resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, that company in itself created some an enormous wealth for um, people who got involved in the story early. And I believe that's where Benchmark's at. It's an early story at the moment. Uh, we don't have a large resource estimate completed yet, but we're working towards it. And um, as is with most micro caps, um, there's a point where um, it, you're best to get involved in the story because it's not about getting a 10 or 30% win. It's about getting multiples on your investment through uh, perhaps a six to two year period. And it's all about timing. Um, if the cycle's near to turning here, then I believe Benchmark's one of those stories that um, people who are willing to take the risk should take it. Right, but you're, you're telling a retail story there in a scenario yeah. where you've said in your own words, you're aiming for institutional funds now. Um, I was gonna ask the question, I still will, uh, which is you're about to raise some money um, at I don't know what price, I'm sure you'll, you'll announce that soon. Um, you're not, you don't need to touch the market for another year by the sounds of it. How are you gonna how are you gonna start driving the share price up at that point to be able to ensure so, uh, that the, the monies, monies you are raising aren't expensive yeah. monies? So uh, what, what's clearly seen in the market right now is drill results can move the market cap of companies. Or not. Or, or not, but I believe um, and when you look at the graph at Benchmark, you can see spikes uh, that go up and, you know, when we started working on this project 14 months ago, we were in 18 cent share price. And now we're close to um, 35 to 40 cents. So we've more than doubled in just over 40, um, 14 months. And this is all based on success with um, gold and silver results at the drill bit. Um, we just completed 11,000 meters of drilling. And we still have more drill results to come out um, over December and January of this year. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be embarking on a large uh, up to 50,000 meter drill program. And those announcements and drill results will come out from the spring right through the fall of 2020. Okay. 
Well, let's let's hope the market's paying attention. Let's hope gold keeps doing what it's meant to be um, doing. Yes. <laughs> Good for everyone, right? Um, That's right. So you think you've got something different compared to the other 30 to 50 million market cap gold companies, certainly the BC ones and others, South Americans, etc. You truly believe that? Yes, well, we're, we're ticking the boxes to um, what would attract a major or help with permitting to put into production. We have First Nations agreements signed. We're a former producer with existing infrastructure at site. So that helps with the clearer, faster path to production with disturbed ground. We've got existing historical data, but have also completed two drill programs. This is allowing us to step out on our zones and grow the zones on strike and at depth. We're completely road accessible. In fact, you drive past the Kames Gold Copper Mine en route to our project. Kames is a world, co- world cup producer, sorry, world class producer mm-hmm. uh, that is uh, embarking on a $600 million development program. Um, you know, we're, we're in a region that has a history of production and mining, and uh, we're basically, you know, taking a project that's been forgotten about, applying some technically sound geological principles and growing this and with a plan to establish a rar- large resource and uh, build a path to production. Right. And what's the one thing that's going to stop you? This, this would be the, the question that uh, gets put in front of every junior. It's, it, you know, provided uh, the gold and silver prices stay where they're at now, there should be absolutely no issues. But uh, if the gold and silver prices were to decline, uh, there's enough money, there's enough capital has been put into this project where we could stay idle for 10 years without having to spend another dollar in the ground. So our holding costs are low. We're in a position where we could hold tight if needed, uh, but preference here is to work as quick as possible to develop a large resource. Okay, well, I look forward to hearing all about it. Um, when do you get to the point where you start to understand the economics better? Is that it's going to, clearly it's going to be a question of understanding the, the grace, but the site, the scale of the opportunity here. But when are you starting work on that? We're already beginning some baseline type work, um, environmental um and social as well we have engaged the first nations uh, economics will begin following the resource estimate um, but um, all of the background environmental and early stage work to permitting is in process as we speak uh, but we can't embark on economics until we have a, a geological model put together which is soon that's about 12 months away okay jim great update Lovely to hear that story for the first time. Um, Stay in touch. Let us know how you get on. Very good. We'll we'll see you at the next conference. Uh, Always a pleasure speaking with you.